Hey y'all, Nick here. I want to try something different. I have an idea. I want to work through this idea from the beginning and just kind of record the process of ideation to possibly developing something. So a couple times now it's come up where we had to write programs to listen to different contract events that were happening on the Ethereum blockchain. We've made a couple of videos about that in the past on how to listen to events and how to had to either listen or query events in the, in the past. What I was thinking is, hey, could we develop something that allows you to enter a contract address and then list out the events that exist and then listen to those events, almost like a um, if then IFFT type of system or um, you know, like all, all these other systems that are out there in terms of like when something happens, do this type of thing. Um, I'm sure people are doing this already. I haven't done any any real research to see if folks are doing it already. I just had this, you know, thought process of like how you would actually go about developing something and and, and problems and, and and different solutions have starting to kind of just bubble in my head. So I wanted to go ahead and jot down some thoughts, maybe prototype a, a small workflow, and then maybe even go into some development. So I'll call this like the um, uh, smart contract event listener right very <laughs> un unmarketable name but let's just start there and i think the goal is to be able to uh, enter a smart contract address retrieve a list of events well i'm gonna not retrieve a list of events and select select the events that we would like to listen to. And then maybe after selecting the events, we can choose to take certain actions, right? And what, what are some of those actions, certain actions? Uh, maybe we start off with just first being a simple HTTP POST request to a URL with certain um, parameters where the parameters are the event log um, topics, right? Because we can have up to four topics within a given event. So we can list out maybe the topics for that event and say, hey, which topic do you want to send to the actual HTTP request? I think with this very simple idea, we can build some pretty powerful things. Um, and, you know, there's a couple of a couple of pretty interesting assumptions that are being made here. So if, if the first thing, so, you know, user flow would be this. One, enter contract address to select events to listen to, three, um, enter URL to post to, and then um, along this, along with topic parameters. So oversimplifying this and just kind of putting into these, these three core features that need to be developed, entering a contract address, selecting events to listen to, and then entering the URL to post along with the topic parameters. So the first thing is pretty simple, right? We can build a UI that allows us to enter a contract address. And maybe we kind of just go over to Figma real quick and we start to just fiddle around with what this would look like, right? So let's go ahead and add a simple desktop frame here and we can have a simple input here that's just you know boom the contract address and we can go ahead and enter the contract address right so something really simple um and maybe put like a little a little text box in here that says like next or something like that and that'll be our our button something really simple make this a little bit bigger maybe we'll make this a lot big bigger there all right something real stupid like kind of stupid simple right keep it simple um now go ahead and give this a little contract address 
perfect. Now we got this all nicey nice. Maybe just put that center here. Awesome. Now when they go to the next page, we can go ahead and this is where I think the first technical challenge comes into play. So we enter this in and now what we want is we want to be able to see a list of the actual events that exist on this contract. So select events and then maybe we have some check boxes here that are the events themselves, right? So we would take this and then we would list out each event. Say we have the transfer event, we have the um, reward event or whatever whatever the events would be claim award maybe or say if it's something like the moon birds nesting or something like that right so this would go ahead and grab the event and then list them out and we can maybe check these off to which ones we want to listen to right so we go ahead and maybe have a little little check box here that would give us the the um put a little X in here all right just to symbolize that we selected this one right real <laughs> real simple comping going on right now all right just to get the idea out so we go from here to here and then on the last page on the, right on the last phase of this we would say uh, post to URL and then this would give us say a URL to post to All right and then maybe gives us which topics we want to pass as parameters so we can we can maybe say um, something like topics to post and this of course is a simple uh, kind of just using a regular HTTP endpoint, but of course we could build upon this to to do things like post to Slack, maybe do an integration with Slack, or you know uh, post something to a Notion board or or something like that, or post or you know go to a database. Um, so there's a lot of different things that could result from this. Uh, so we can have different topics here. So maybe you know, let's take the same thing here and just bring it over. So topic topic one. So we'd probably start on topic one because topic zero is going to always be the the name of the event. All right, topic two, etc. So we go to topic four, right? So we'd select the topics and then we could save it. Right. And then once you do this, this would then save this contract address along with its selected events along with the URL that we want to post to and the topics that we want to post in the body of that post and then register it within some type of back-end process that would listen to this given contract. So this is actually a, something that we've done in the past but we've done it for specific contracts and we've had these long-standing programs running on a server that's just sitting there listening to these contracts. Now, the architecture of this type of application would be kind of interesting because there's a couple of different components here, right? On its surface, it seems like this is pretty simple, right? And it probably is. It's probably There's probably some gotchas that we're going to hit along our journey. But let's go ahead and let's sketch out a little architecture diagram of what this may look like, right? So we know that we know that we're going to need the front end, right? That's a given. That's kind of what we just comped out there. Very simple comp. We're going to need the front end. So let's go ahead and just draw that again. So we're going to go ahead and draw this. And this is going to be our front end, right? So we'll have our front end app here. Now the front end, front end app will have to write this information to some type of database, right? So we'll have some type of DB layer here. The DB layer will store um, all of the information that the user just entered, right? 
and I'll make this half this because there's going to be other things that this front end needs to interact with. So we'll make this the front end. And then this is going to be some type of database layer. We don't know exactly what type of database we're going to use just yet, but we know we need some way to actually store this information. Now, one complication that comes to mind is the fact that I just entered a contract address here and then we go ahead and list out these events. Now, for folks that have followed along with our YouTube series, we need to know some information in order to get this, this event listing. Does anybody remember what that is? It's the contracts ABI. By just using the contract address, we do not have any information about how the program that's deployed at that contract address is actually structured, right? What's stored on the blockchain is just compiled bytecode in EVM, um, in EVM code. So we don't actually have access to the ABI. I'm sure there's ways to decompile and, and parse it and, and all that type of stuff. But really what we need is the ABI to be able to parse it. Now, we can ask the user to enter the ABI, which is probably the simplest way to do it, is maybe put a step inside of here to say, hey, enter this ABI and we'll be able to now list the events for you because you just gave them to us. <laughs> or we can try to leverage some APIs that exist on the web that allow us to get the ABIs. One that comes to mind is Etherscan's API. So Etherscan, um, when a lot of projects, when they publish their, when they publish their smart contracts to Ethereum, they also publish their verified source code and ABI to Etherscan. And this serves as kind of a, as a, a you know, a, an openness layer, right, of, of disclosing your code so that everyone can see it. You can go in there and you can read the smart contract. You can look at its ABI. You can even grab its API if you wanted to do things like we're doing now. Now, the cool thing about their API is that they do have an endpoint or there, did I say ABI? API, that they do have an endpoint that allows us to get the ABI given a contract address. So I'm thinking we can leverage this in order to go ahead and get the ABI for a contract address. And maybe if we can't find that contract address or it's just not published, then we can expose some type of open form field to the user to say, okay, we can't grab it automatically, it doesn't look like it's published, can you just enter the ABI? Maybe it's some custom developed contract where they didn't deploy the, the actual ABI. So I think that whole thing, with that whole thing said, I think we're gonna need some type of service that is gonna go ahead and get the ABI. Now I'm not gonna specifically call out Etherscan here because I'm just making a general architectural view of this. So we'll say an ABI API, we love acronyms. So some type of ABI API is what we're going to need here. All right. And the front end is going to go ahead and go ahead and request from this and it will get data back from this. All right. My lines aren't straight, but it's okay. All right. And it will write data to the database. It'll actually probably do go both ways too with the database. So we can make a, a bi-directional diagram here as well. That's okay, whoops. Oh, they're so small that they don't wanna be, uh, let's zoom in here. Ah, okay, you get the idea, we don't have to do that. So now that we have the front end, we have the database, we have an ABI API that will allow us to get to this point, um, when, when a user saves this, we're assuming that this is going to constantly be watching the actual, um, the contracts that are entered here for the user. So we're gonna need some type of backend, right? So the backend is gonna sit here, and this backend is gonna have some type of long running process that will read from this database, right? So it'll read from the database, and it will set up a web socket to some type of node service. So we would need some type of node service. So some type of node service like um, maybe alchemy, right? Um, right, so that, that, that'll be some type of node. Some, some, we can even run your, we could run our own node to do this as well. Um, and this is gonna probably have uh, 
a WebSocket interface, right? So, because we want to be able to have real-time communications with our backend and the node. So this is going to be some type of WebSocket. So here, this, this reading and writing back and forth is going to have a WebSocket connection. Having some, some fun with these arrows. All right, cool. So this is going to be a WebSocket connection or some type of connection that allows us to have a channel, an open channel of communication between a node and our backend service. The backend service we can call our e event watcher. Awesome. So I think that is kind of the the initial architectural design. I'm probably missing stuff here for a service like this. Um, we would have a front end and in terms of actual costs and service providers we would need to actually host this, I'm thinking the front end goes on something simple like a, a static server like Vercel or Netlify or something like that. We create this with a maybe a Next.js app using some, some React front end. Um, we then can use, if we're using Next.js, we can develop an API endpoint that then that endpoint integrates with the ABI API. Um, maybe we use a database system like Firebase to be able to easily uh, read and write at a low cost to the database. Um, and then this backend can then read from that database. This would probably be a Node.js application that would run on, on some backend small compute server um, that would just read the database and build maybe an array of, uh, of the different contracts and ABIs that, that it is watching and react to those events. Um, one interesting thing is we would need to probably restart this or somehow um, have some type of dynamic um, kind of dynamic list that when somebody adds to the database here, it automatically adds the back end here. Um, and then, you know, of course, we'd, we'd have this persistent node connection here. Now, the reason why I, I kind of called out Alchemy here is I know Alchemy has uh, a Node.js library that handles WebSocket connections pretty well. It wraps Web3.js um, with their WebSocket endpoints and does some things that um, are kind of frequently anno an annoying factor of WebSockets, things like making sure that the WebSocket connection stays connected. If it does go down, it'll reestablish that connection um, and stuff like that, stuff that we kind of, we need to work really well and we don't want to necessarily reinvent the wheel. So I think that's probably a, a good way to, to architect this. So yeah, I just kind of wanted to get that idea out of my head and um, record it and see if there's any interest in this. I think um, it's something that, like I said, we've developed for specific projects. And um, I wonder if there's an interest to be able to generalize this more. And I'm, I'm curious to see what other challenges there are to this that, um, that I'm just not thinking of right now. So I'm going to stop here, and uh, yeah, if this is interesting to folks, I'll, uh, I'll continue to record these and see what we come up with. All right, thanks.